I'm about to sell most of my PS Vita collection. See you later, buddy. This one's out of here. Never been able to get into a Disgaea game. Don't really see that changing. In December 2011, Sony released the PlayStation Vita to consumers eager for the follow-up to their previous handheld console, the PSP. I actually love this game. Metal and strategy, keeping this one. It's not a great game but I love this series. Okay, so, so far I'm not getting rid of a lot of games. Let me go to another stack. I actually like Call of Duty. This console was a beast and really is like the Nintendo Switch 1.0. I heard this is kind of like a throwback to Earthbound. You gotta keep the Tails game. Dual analog sticks, an OLED screen, front and back touchpad. I totally wanna play this and open it. A number of features, all kinds of wonderful things, legacy software you could download and play on the console like PS1 games. Uh... It's actually kind of hard. And it was just an incredible experience on the go. Too weird not to keep around. Way fun keeping this one. Same with Dynasty Warriors, Extreme Legends. That was from my buddy Josh. Okay, so I'm not getting rid of as much as I thought. I got into the hype. I don't need this like huge fris There's like a frisbee in here. Sometimes I'm in the mood for an okay kart racer. This is a super rare variant. I bought a bunch of PS Vita games, accessories. One of my very favorite games on the Vita. Never really been able to get into Hatsune Miku. Love this game. I don't know that that's gonna change anytime soon. Even got all of the console boxes you can in fact see that all on my ps vita breakdown video that i have here on the channel now other than the memory card the other big complaint about the playstation vita was that it didn't seem to have a lot of physical games that you could buy but that could not have been further from the truth i know this because i collected over 300 of them apparently this is a great rpg i actually played this game and eh, one of the best puzzle game series but nothing beats Puzzle Fighter. You already knew that. I have everything from just regular physical editions like this one. When I want to play Tenchu, I play this. Some kind of a weird like puzzler. All the way over to lots of crazy collector's editions. Deathmark looked really interesting. I'm gonna give this one a try. I don't like Atari. Sorry. There are a lot of games that I purposefully did avoid, but I did collect almost every single physical copy. 100% uh, keeping this. Better than Ben 10. But as much as I love this console, I've come to realize something. A lot of these games, I just know that I'm never going to play. No interest in the series. All right, I got three Tukiden. I was collecting them because it was fun to collect them. Definitely keeping Muramasa. And I just had the sense that one day they would be very hard to find. Yeah, keeping these. But at this stage of my collecting journey, I don't feel like that's a good enough reason to keep these games anymore. And I'd rather have a curated collection rather than a collection of having everything, which I understand is a little bit hypocritical coming from a guy who's got every N64 game in its original box. Top three favorite PlayStation Vita games for me. One of my top other parts of five Vita games, love this one playing. I mean, this is all amazing software. I'm gonna try it first, I heard it's horrible. You've got everything from these crazy special editions up here. The Yamawari games. I don't know, it's just such a, a weird, bizarre horror game. I actually love this game. Man, I'm keeping like all of them. Stuff that I never see, like these Atelier games. No interest in this series at all. The Danganronpa. The Vita games are great. They're, you know, made for that platform, but I can get the same experience on the Switch. I just heard a few of you gasp out loud. Sorry. A lot of these games I got because I thought, I'll play them later, I'll play them later. And I never did. Retro City Rampage DX with the two different cover variants. This one's gone. I don't know if you've ever been that way as a collector where you've thought to yourself, I'm gonna play these games. I think I'm gonna keep the uh, the enhanced version and sell this. I'm a lover, not a fighter. SpongeBob is the worst. A lot of these games are North American release, but a lot of these were actually PAL imports. Rugby, never played a day in my life. Don't know how to play, not interested in learning because I'm a peasant. Well, it's got Justin Bieber on the cover and Harry Styles. Vegas Party. Nah. A lot of these games have just been sitting on the shelf with the intent to play them one day, but the reality is I don't know if I'm ever going to play them. Natural Doctrine I've heard is hard for the sake of being hard, and having rare games for the sake of rare games is just not a good enough reason for me to hold on to them. I think it's like a cute em up It's a shooter, I believe. And you might be wondering, why not just put them in a box Hide them out somewhere, wait until the value goes up way more, and then, you know, then you could sell them for even more of a profit. Or see if you change your mind and want to go back and play them again someday. It's, I think, doubled from what I paid for it in terms of value at this point. I think I'd rather just sell them now, and if I regret this later, I'll regret this later. Ah, uh, I'm fine. Reality is, I've got some financial needs I've got to hit, and these games might be able to help me take care of some of those obligations. The Vita one, sadly, is gonna be sold, or maybe happily, you can come buy it. There's no predicting when games go up and when they go down, and these games might triple, quadruple, whatever in value. I might sell this for just the regular physical version of it. I guess that's all the more reason to sell them because people might be excited about having them for the collection now. I think I stepped on it with a hammer once. I just know for me, I'd rather have a curated collection right now rather than a collection full of stuff that I'm pretty confident I'm not going to play. 
Why did I buy this? So I've grabbed two boxes and I'm gonna fill these up with the games that I absolutely don't want. Saturday morning RPG is gonna go. I'm selling it. Octodad, I'm sorry about this. The games that I have at least a middling desire to play or better, I'm gonna hang on to those. I love this game. I don't care what you say, this stays. Touch my Katamari. And even though a lot of these are sealed, I'm not gonna grade them and go higher or whatever. This is the first limited run games release ever made. For now, I'm gonna hang on to it. There might be a gamer out there who wants to grade them themselves, or they might wanna open them and play them. It's crazy, I know. I have almost the entire limited run Vita set. This is one of those Chemco whatever RPGs. Like a lot of these games you could download from the Vita shop for like $2, or you could buy them for $30 from limited run. Fallen Legion, Flames of Rebellion. It's gonna fall out of my collection and go get sold. Without the Vita, there is no limited run games story. Let me hang on to this one. Limited run made this five year PlayStation Vita specific cart. This is too cool not to keep in the uh, collection. That's all of the individual Vita games. These are the Play Asia releases. These Play Asia releases were a bit like limited run games, but from Play Asia. One more dungeon. One more game for the sale pile. Sir eats a lot. We'd get along. Mike Tyson's punch out with, I think you're a duck. Furwind? I mean, how could you get rid of that game? This is like a total love letter to PS1 survival horror games, complete with intentionally warbly graphics. Apparently it's not a good game. I have to keep this one. You might be thinking to yourself, Mort, I'm really bored. What is the point of this video? Why do I want to see you go through your collection and get rid of it all? Night and plus? Night in my collection anymore. Fair question. Here's the thing, I'm not selling it on eBay, on whatnot, I'm not doing any streams. I'm sending all of this over to my buddy Punky at Hidden Gems Video Games. This one might surprise some of my friends and, and watcher people. We have these Mecco Tales games that were signed by the developer. I only ever found it to be like fine. How broke you go to my sale pile? Skull Pirates, the backer edition. I backed it on Kickstarter in case you were wondering. You're welcome. This is like a Metal Gear Solid parody game. Absolutely keeping this one. This is one of the last released games on the PS Vita, if not the last released physical copy of the game released on the Vita. I'm definitely keeping this one. That's all the PlayAsia games. Let's get to all these special editions. Some of these are really cool. This game is supposed to be incredible. I'm definitely keeping this one. Selling this one. This one stays. I want to try it. Sorry. This comes with a spoon. I'll keep it. Apparently this is just so brutally difficult. I have this on PS4 as well. Uh, but I still want to play it on Vita. Let me get to a couple more oversized ones. This is such a not great. I don't have an interest in this series enough to want to hang on to this version of it, so I'm going to sell it. I'll hang on to this one. Now we're going to get to the big special edition. These would be considered grails for the console. I don't want to sell this game if this was the only special edition of it, but here's the thing. I rebought the game on the PS5. Our No Surge Plus might be the most desired PlayStation Vita collector's edition for many. However, this one's already spoken for. Persona fans, this is a dream grail item for the PS Vita. Here's all of these games, all of these special editions, all of these regular games, all of this stuff. Now, I love the PlayStation Vita. It's a great console. I just don't need all of this stuff. It has been a couple of days since I pulled all of the games off the shelf. This is what's left of my PlayStation Vita collection and I reorganized everything. I've got two full rows of games of some of my favorite games for the console and some of the games that are just reviewed really well and I'm very happy with what's there. And if you come down a little lower, that's my special editions that I have left. I wanna bring up something that's actually, I think, relevant to this conversation, which is, I wondered how I'd feel a couple of days after doing this when I be thinking, no, this is a big mistake, I wanna keep it all, and so far, I haven't felt that way at all. In fact, I've kind of felt some relief. You can always make the case that it's good to hold on to it and wait for values to go up, but it's more of an excuse for me right now than a good point. When I go through and price everything, list everything, and take the time to do all of that stuff on eBay, Amazon, Mercari, even to do a whatnot sale to take all the photos, whatever it might be, that takes a lot of time. And then afterwards, there's usually a 10, 15-ish percent you know, fees plus my shipping supplies. But then there's still, on top of all of that, I gotta get all the stuff to the post office 
And if anything gets lost, damaged, stolen, I'm responsible for all that as a seller. It's something that just takes up a lot of time. Rather than giving eBay a cut of the sales or whoever else, which they're a great company, they, they've been so helpful to me in the past, I'm gonna give it to a friend in a local shop and see if this experiment really works. It's all gonna just be in the store. You can see it for yourself if you want to. You don't have to rely on photos. It'll be stickered and priced right there. If you like the price, great. We'll see what happens. So far, I'm really surprised at some of the pricing on Vita. One thing I'm noticing is that those Play Asia releases, some of them have gone through the roof in terms of value. Whereas a lot of the limited run games are in that 30-ish, 40-ish dollar range. I've got a whole box still of, um, games to go through. I'm surprised. I'm really shocked. I wonder if this is kind of a future Turbo Graphics 16 kind of a situation. Also worth noting, the eBay sold comps, the overwhelming vast majority of these games are factory sealed. All right, I have to actually take a break and get the stuff now down to the shop because um, I'm meeting someone there who saw my Instagram post that I was selling all this stuff. I wanted to buy a few things. But before I get over to Punky Shop, I need to tell you about this video's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Brio, the people who brought the wonderful neck massage. And I'm gonna wear it the whole time I do this ad because I love their products. I've been bending a lot lately and between setup and teardown, it's a long day of being on my feet. There's no breaks, there's no sitting down. My feet get sore and tired, but Brio's got an excellent solution. The Brio foot massager provides a deep tissue massage right in the comfort of your own couch. And just like with the N5 Mini, there's multiple settings to ensure the best massage you can enjoy for your feet. There's multiple types of massages at multiple strengths. It has this thing where it like pressures into your feet and then releases and it feels so good and relaxing. And this one has a heat setting that when applied takes about a minute and a half before you really start feeling some warmth and heat onto your feet as compared to their rivals that take about eight to nine minutes. Between the foot massager and the neck massager, I've been seriously impressed with Brio's products. They're wonderful resources for your own personal self-care, for relaxing, and even though I'm not a doctor, this stuff feels really good on those places of soreness in my feet, especially at the end of a long day. Especially as we enter into the holiday season, massagers are an incredible gift to give to that family member or loved one where you're not really sure what to get them. Brio also has a gift package for the foot massager that includes greeting cards and Christmas socks. How cool is that? Use my discount code and order yours today. Thank you so much to Brio for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back over to Punky's store, but I'm gonna keep enjoying my Massage first. I need to do B-roll for like two hours on my feet just to make sure I got it right. This is all of the games that I am selling in one sweet little case here at Hidden Gem Video Games. What are we saying? What are we doing here? I'm just gonna ask you some questions. <laughs> oh gosh. Of all of my over 300 physical copies of PlayStation Vita games, I'm getting rid of 185 of them. Have you ever sold off a lot of your collection before? I have, yes. And how did you feel afterwards? All the emotions, my friend. Yeah. You know, happy, sad, yeah. at the same time, joyful, and then regretful. Uh -huh. You're gonna feel it all. I do feel a little bit of a pain in my heart. Like, why am I doing this? But at the same time, I feel a lot of relief. I feel like it's the right thing to do. You're definitely in the frame. Am I too high? I don't normally see very much PlayStation Vita at game stores or otherwise at, you know, buy, sell, trade events very often as is. So to have this much in one space is pretty wild. Do you get a lot of Vita trades in the store? Uh, not very much, actually. Uh, Vita is pretty sought out after nowadays. Yeah. And it's definitely growing. So uh, I, I think you got some gold here. And some of these, there's one sale and then there's no listings. There's so so rare and hard to find, you just can't find anything to go with them. I thought for sure that the Persona 4 Golden would be the big grail of the bunch, and indeed it was. That's about a $600 game, and that one sold already. Nathan just popped in, and as I'm finishing setting up, he's the first official customer of the Hidden Gems PlayStation Vita Mort's Garage collaboration. I was surprised that Demon Gaze 2 is about a $200 game. Tell me why you picked this one. Oh, it looked interesting, and uh, I never played any Vita game, and this is the first one I'm gonna try it out. We've decided that it will not be here forever. I've heard, limited time only, limited right? Limited time only. So now through October 31st, this stuff will be here at Hidden Gem Video Games in Fountain Valley, California. Come to the store, come to the store anyway. Pac-Man's taking a dump, I, and it's really funny. Come to the store between now and October 31st to check this stuff out, support Punky's business, support me getting rid of some of my collection, I'm proud of you, <laughs> I'm cry. proud of you. Also, as we're going along, I'm gonna be updating how the sales are going and what's moving. 
on uh, the channel here through the YouTube Shorts. Thank you, Mort. Yes, thank you, Punky. I'm so excited. This is awesome. <laughs> if you have a PlayStation Vita, what's the one game that you can't live without? Leave that in the comment section below. I'll see you at Hidden Gem Video Games. <laughs> thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. I'll see you soon. Take care. If you like this video, Punky will give you 50% off your next purchase of anything in his store. Not in this case, unfortunately, but anything in his store. Make sure you like this one. He hasn't confirmed that, but I, I think that's something he, he said he'd be cool with.